I have this one coming from Cuba S. It goes, where is the best place to install an aftermarket oil temperature, sump, cylinder head, and oil pressure sensor? And then he has a second question. What do you think about the low temperature thermostat in these engines? Okay, so it's really three questions. Oil temp sensor, mm -hmm. oil pressure sensor, and then the low temp thermostat. And all, all three are good questions. So the factory oil temp sensor is actually built into the oil level sensor. The sump really is the right place to measure oil temp. That's after it's been returned from the engine and hasn't gone back through the oil cooler yet. And so that's kind of the, the right place to measure it. Uh, the oil temperature measured by the engine is actually available on the CAN bus of most of the 996 and all the 997 models. And so that's one way to get that data without a external sensor. And we've looked at that data quite a bit in comparison to an aftermarket sensor and we found it to be really good. The uh, oil pressure sensor on the other hand, the best place to put that's gonna be at the top of the heads. We've done a lot of data logging with oil pressure sensors at the filter and the advantage of that is it's immediately after the oil pump. So when we were doing testing of various sumps, various oils, very oil levels, that kind of eliminated a lot of the other factors that happened after that and just let us see where was the engine sucking air and losing pressure coming directly after the pump. And mm -hmm. so that's why we measured it there for a lot of our testing. But the end results, what I really wanna see when I'm looking at oil pressure data for an engine after it's been through you know, the heads and essentially the uh, crankshaft and bearings. And so there are two ports, one on each bank on top of the valve covers. Now then the uh, OEM oil pressure sensor is on there for the Caymans. It's actually an oil pressure switch for the Cayman and Boxsters. The 911s have an oil pressure sensor and that can be read either on some of the dashes, have an oil pressure gauge on it. It can actually, the Cayman can be replaced with that 997, 996 oil pressure sensor, and that can be routed into the ECU, a little more complicated, or uh, that can be replaced either on that bank or have another oil pressure sensor added on the other bank in order to get oil pressure data at the top of the heads. And so that's really the right place to do it. Hmm. Uh, the ECU does not use oil pressure for any of its calculations or any of its maps. So it is okay to replace that OEM sensor with an aftermarket sensor if you're wanting to get that data elsewise. Otherwise, if you have a low profile sensor, especially on the Caymans, there's limited room on the other side, but you can add a uh, aftermarket sensor. And typically we use eighth inch NPT sensors and the size of the plug is an M14 by 1.5. And so if there's an M14 by 1.5 adapter to an eighth inch NPT, that's what's required to read that information uh, or to adapt an aftermarket uh, oil pressure sensor to the heads. Did we answer? The so, and then lastly comes to the low temp thermostat. And so we do use a low temp thermostat on all of our builds. Now then, what does the thermostat even do? Well, maybe we should get a block and kind of see how that works. <laughs> Let's do that. So essentially I thought it might be kind of fun to use this as a chance just to kind of look and say, okay, how does a thermostat even work and what does it do? And so this is essentially the inlet from the radiators where the water has cycled through the radiators, cooled off, and it's coming back to the engine. And then the thermostat itself is this piece right here. You can see there's a spring and like a little plunger thing. And so this sets down against there and blocks or prevents the water from coming back from the radiators. Whether we've got water coming back from the radiators or not, the water pump, which goes here, still needs to be able to pump water through the engine. And so there's actually a bypass that comes through here that is just circling the same water through the engine 
allowing it to gain temperature as it goes. So if you look, this right here is actually filled with wax. And so as the water temperature heats up, that wax begins to melt and allows this valve to open and the water to flow through from the radiators. So essentially the only difference between a low temp and a regular temp thermostat is how early this opens up and allows the cooler water from the radiators to start circulating through the engine as opposed to just recirculating the water from the engine itself. Let's talk about what advantage is there for that to happen earlier. So essentially how Porsche designed these engines is with an 83 degree Celsius thermostat. And so what that means is the thermostat's going to open at somewhere around 181 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll start opening and be completely open by about 185 degrees Fahrenheit. And so at that point, probably going to have a circulating typical running temp, you know, with normal factors, if you will, of somewhere around 194 to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. If we're just talking about, uh, you know, um, no extra heat going through the engine or, you know, stop and go traffic, pushing the engine hard. We're talking about just putting around normal engine type running. Now then a low temp thermostat's gonna open up around 160 degrees, say. It'll be fully open around 167 degrees. So, I mean, we're talking about maybe about a 20 degree difference of mm. when it opens. Now then, opening sooner in the process, you know, do we, is 160 even fully warmed up for the engine? And we've talked before, we want that engine starting to get some good heat in it before we push the engine too hard, start adding a lot of load because we want all the temps to come up evenly in the mm -hmm. engine. So I don't really see a big advantage there to going with a low temp versus the normal one. For normal day-to-day -day driving where the advantage would be is you know, typically our running temps are going to be somewhere around 180 to 190 with a low temp thermostat versus around 195 to 200, 205. So probably maybe a little bit of an advantage there. But once we start pushing the engine and really adding load and kind of driven it the way it's meant to be driven, we're going to see temps exceed that anyway. Mm -hmm. And so it's not going to matter whether you have a low temp thermostat or a normal thermostat it's gonna be well above that mark. You know, it's not unusual to see water temps get up into the 220s, especially with like stop and go traffic in warmer weather and warmer climates. The actual, when the engine reaches 247 degree water temp is when it will actually flag it and say, hey, the engine's too hot, you know, you, you need to do something. And so, you know, generally we want to see engine temps below, water temps below 230, uh, below 220 is ideal, but in some track circumstances, you know, especially if running street engines on track, generally that's the kind of the worst case scenario. Uh, on a dedicated track car or race car, we can pull those front condensers off, we can pull the front fans off, we can even you know, remove the wheel well liners and that allows the radiators to really maximize airflow and, and drop those cooling, you know, those coolant temps the most. But when we're taking, you know, when we leave all that on, all those, you know, comforts and the air conditioning and whatnot, and then we take that car on track, it, it's tough to keep the, keep the temps below kind of that two you know, 225 mark. Now then some people might think, well, wait a second. At what temperature does water boil? And does that play a factor in here, mm. right? Well, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level. Mm. Now then, two factors come into play in an engine and why that doesn't apply. One is the more pressure we put on the system, the higher the temperature can go before it boils. Mm. And so that's why typically radiator caps are gonna add anywhere you know, from a half bar to a bar of pressure on the system and raise that boiling point. And then the other thing is we typically, you know, on track, we typically run you know, a straight water mix or a water slash water wetter mix. Mm -hmm. um, but the 50-50 coolant that's used in most cases, uh, again, that's gonna raise that 
uh, boiling temp. So, you know, if I've got the boiling point of, you know, say if I'm running 50-50 coolant and I've got uh, an extra bar over atmosphere, an extra 14 PSI of pressure in the system, you know, that, that takes my boiling point from 212 up to 207 degrees Fahrenheit. Hard. So that's why it's not really kind of at play when we're talking about car engines. So I guess the bottom line is, yeah, the low temp thermostats are nice. We use them on all of our builds, you know, but it's really kind of, you know, negligible advantages in my opinion.